If you're serious about building a brand, it's, it's a year by year. Billion dollar businesses actually have been built already on the back of just social media. Because yeah. I saw what you're doing, the whole social media thing, mm -hmm. and it's, you know, people are doing it, you're seeing it, but it's still rare. Yeah, so yeah. the fact that you got it and you're nailing it and you're yeah. like Gary Vee, you don't Gary Vee obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you know, you're getting that Gary Vee style up, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, back to your point, yeah, I was trying to explain. So I'm also in the investment world, mm -hmm. uh, that's where I get my real estate stuff from. Yeah. Uh, I'm not active because I'm running the agency, yeah. but I have like meetings every week. I'm in Oakville and I have, most of our properties are in Oakville Hamilton here because right okay. of the cash flow. Yeah. So we do a lot of, um, just to give you background on me, but we do a lot of single families. Okay. Then we convert to multifamily legal duplexes and then we'll either sell them or we'll just keep them long term with JV partners, or whatever. Yeah. That's kind of our deal. So I'm I'm big into that. I was actually going to tell you, if you're interested, there's an event on, uh, actually, next Wednesday, not this Wednesday coming, but the Wednesday yeah. following. Yeah. I don't know if you heard of a friend of mine. His name's Erwin Zito. So he has a, a podcast called The Truth About Real Estate Investing for Canadians. It's one of the top podcasts in Canada for real estate investing. He's a multi, I think, three-time award-winning best realtor of the year award something. He's a yeah. Rain Award winner. He's a rock star award winner. Crazy. Where's he um, from? He's from, he lives in Burlington. He's okay. active in Hamilton, so all okay. lives in Hamilton. Cool. Um, but he's built a team, he's like monster, right? Yeah. But now he's big in the investment world. So. But he's now getting to the side where he's built a team, but his team focuses on just helping investors. Yes. He's got about seven agents around him. He sends in leads. He focuses on networking events. They, yeah. So this year we built this whole new brand, me and him partnered, uh, and he's a client of my agency as well, and it's called Infinity Wealth. So you'll, you'll start hearing about it. What's it called? Infinity Wealth. Okay. So we're just launching this literally like this week. Yeah. It's a group, so it's a series of monthly events. There's going to be an annual summit at the end of this year. We're talking speaker quality of like Grant Carter. Like we're putting out hundreds of hundreds of dollars to put this out. Yeah. We're going to try to beat out Rain, beat out Rockstar, beat out everybody. Um, and it's also a series of monthly events. The first one's happening next Wednesday, yeah, so yeah. The, on the 23rd. Okay. To give you an idea, he sent out one email. It's a paid event just to like filter out, but it's like 40 bucks, goes to charity. 140 people. Wow. 24 hours. Nice, nice. Paid so nice. the influence he's having in the area, yeah. we're so yeah. I'll see if I can get you an invite to that just in case you're around. Okay. That's a fucking power man. You're going to have 140 investors <laughs> that are all buying every year. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. That's so, good. It's good. It's, good. It's, it's amazing the network, right? That's key, amazing. Yeah. Right? I come from a, like a serious marketing background, right? Like from I can tell. Doing events and nice. all that stuff, right? I was uh, putting together some of the biggest parties in, in Toronto. Nice. Right? Where? So, what were you doing? Downtown. Downtown. Um, I, worked at, I worked at uh, Republic for, do you know where that Republic used to be? No. Richmond and John. Oh, okay, yeah. I was in the Scotiabank Theater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was there for like two and a half, three years. Oh, okay. I was in Lot 332, another big venue that I ran for uh, around the same time. Yeah. And yeah, we, I was outside, you know, Friday, Saturdays. Sometimes Wednesdays, yeah, yeah, like yeah. since I was a teenager to Selling. 30 years old, yeah. just meeting people, thousands of people a weekend. Crazy. But I, I was in charge of putting together like all the marketing, how to get people to come right. to the venue because there's yeah. a lot of better options yeah. than the places that I worked at. Yeah. Gotcha. So gotcha. I had to figure out you know, how to get them in there. Celebrities, all that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. yeah. So that's smart. And, th and that's where like I'm seeing the value now in business is like, mm -hmm. that's the way it's going. It's how do you put yeah. together great people, bring great value. And the rest falls in. Yeah. So many people are thinking of these like gimmicks and oh we'll push this or we'll teach this. It's it's the environment. Yeah, no, you get there, it's, right? You know what it is? Is that people are thinking um, they're trying to make money. That's their that's, it. that's yeah. their mentality. Yeah. If you're yeah. thinking of what am I gonna do? Like put yourself in the customer's shoes. Right. Like what do I want to go to this event, right. for example? Or what do I like what value are you giving them if they're buying a property? 100%. Right? 100%. So like pre-construction, if you're not giving them any incentives, they're not going to buy it if it's an investor. Right, right. Development charges and levies have to be capped, right, right. to lease during occupancy, right. like um, right. special deposit structures, like that kind of stuff. Yeah. And yeah. when builders don't include that, people don't buy, right? 100%. Yeah. Because like why? Like why tie up your money for three years so exactly. they can get funding and finish their yeah. project? <laughs> and then in, in the agreement, it actually states that, you know, if builder doesn't get financing or whatever, they can back out of the project. Actually, that just happened recently. Yeah. I was just talking to somebody, actually, he's a mortgage broker, a friend of mine, mm -hmm. and he bought, I don't remember which ones it was, it was somewhere in Woodbridge, it could have been the 7 and Key yeah. or 7 and Jane, I don't remember. No, no, it's, I actually sold that project, it was, um, but it was yours. Yeah, 7 and, yeah, 7 and Jane. 7 and Jane, okay, yeah. so he was telling me that he bought it, sat in it for like two years or something, and he got a call that, uh, they're giving everyone's money back and they're gonna resell it because the market went up so much, yeah. which is a dick move because horrible. How's that builder gonna sell next time? I don't think who's, people will buy from it. Who's gonna again. trust that? They won't. They won't. It's ridiculous. Yeah. 
And I saw you know, you know what happened with, with me is I, yeah. I got married in January 2017. Yeah. So oh, we got married in Jamaica, but we were supposed to go to Italy or Europe just to travel a bit, right? Oh. No, you know, for a honeymoon, yeah. right? Yeah. Beautiful. I didn't go because of that project. Oh, shit. Yeah. No. That's what pissed me off the most. What happened? What, what dragged you back? Why couldn't you leave? Well, because it was launching, so we're like, you know what? Um, I, I have a lot of buyers. Like, I had a list right off the top of my head, like, just 40 people that wanted to buy. Right? Yeah, 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 so, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, that was, cause I see stuff like that, too, even in this bill a few years ago. Yeah. They had a huge residential development, like, like yeah. full detached homes. I know, I know. Hundreds. Yeah. And they backed out two years in and gave everyone their money back. Wow. Oh, they but, backed out. But I think it's that they went bankrupt. I think something happened with funding. Wow. They couldn't sustain. They yeah. went bankrupt. Some other builder bought them out, but then when that builder took over, they gave everyone their money back and yeah. resold the whole project again because wow. it was ready to be sold it for years. more. For more. So that was probably a setup. Yeah. I, that's what I'm wondering. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Right? Sucks. So, but people got like, you're giving these guys, like, some people in cases are putting down 100 grand, 150 grand, 200 grand, yeah. and sitting for two years, and then you get nothing back yeah. for it. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. I know. Because people are buying into the market, especially, I feel, I feel bad for the younger people that are starting yeah. off a family, they're buying their first property because, yeah. you know, they're struggling to just get into something, yeah. right? So and after they, you know, the builder gives them their money back and then they're trying to get in the market again. It's like gone up like 200 grand. Yeah. No, it's... And then you have the stress tests and all this Ooh. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's why condos are like booming, right? Blowing so, up. Yeah. Yeah. We bought, I bought one in, so my office, the agency office is in Barry, so my yeah. marketing company. We're in Barry. Uh, we're right at Maple View and uh, Bayview. Okay. So right off the 400 in Maple View, basically, yeah. it's right at the exit. That's where our office is. But I bought, we bought two condos there earlier at the gal uh, the gallery, kind of means by Pratt. So yeah, yeah. Said that. Yeah. We bought two there, we got it at 280. And now the first, because it's like four buildings, I believe four or five buildings, the first few are already up and selling. And they're selling the same units for like 410, 420. Nice. Nice. And it's like, we only got that like two years ago. Yeah. So the amount of growth in the condo market, yeah. when a lot of other things have been slowing down, like yeah. in the inner city in yeah. Toronto, like, like detached, like that's just been kind of holding or slowing. And condos, like earlier, th last year in the first of like, January to March, I think condos in Barrie went up 28% mm -hmm. in like three months. Yeah, it's because there's not a lot of condos in Barrie, that's oh. why. Yeah. And it's all people can afford. Yeah. And, and people, some people want that that style of living, right? Yeah, oh, they, yeah. they want to live oh, in a yeah. condo. Oh, they yeah. don't want to shovel the snow yeah. or put the yeah. grass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially in Barrie, you guys get a lot more snow, right? So it's so yeah. bad. I grew up here. I grew up in Vaughan, and we just yeah. moved up. I moved up there a couple years ago to start the office. Okay. Because um, it was it's an opportunity. It was a fast growing city. Mm -hmm. No one was competing with us, and we could just go yeah, in and yeah, like yeah. sweep it. Yeah. But now we work with clients everywhere anyway. Like we're working with yeah. Oakville, Hamilton. It doesn't Toronto. matter where you live. No, really, yeah. no. But I'll, I'll come back eventually. And like you said, I actually like condo living. Like mm -hmm. I would consider my next purchase being a condo again, either in downtown Toronto. Or Vaughn, yeah. but a nicer one, a yeah. bigger one, yeah. a nice yeah. view. Yeah. Because you feel like that luxury, yeah. like that hotel. You walk in, you don't worry about nothing, no landscape, no yeah, broken exactly. yeah, no yeah. grass. Yeah. I see you posting all the time on social. Mm -hmm. What's that been doing for you in the business sense? Like, have you seen growth from that? Anything happening? The, the main reason why I post is um, because of the, the nightclub stuff that I used to do. Right. That's how I connect with my, my oh, audience. Very smart. Um, so, like, I, I'm not downtown anymore. I don't have time to promote. I wish yeah. I could. I yeah. miss it a lot. Yeah. Um, I'll do events here and there. Yeah. But uh, but that's how I connect with my friends that I used to get right. in the clubs. Right, right, right. So, for me, it's not, like, to gain business. Just that's my, that's yeah. my way of doing it. Yeah. I'm giving out some value, value. to people. Value, yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's just my... Uh, so you have, have you had any business come through? Has anyone ever DM'd you instead of, or I, someone I, from the past be like, oh, I like, because what I find when I do it, yeah, it's not that they're new people, but just like they get reminded you exist. Like, that's what it is. They right. get reminded that you right. exist, and that's why yeah. I do it. And I yeah. want to stay in touch with them. So I'll, I'll message my my friends, yeah, yeah. people I used to get into clubs, like people used to come every weekend, right? right. So that's one of the main reasons I do it because I'm not down there anymore. Like a couple of years back, I wasn't posting as much, right. um, but uh, I was downtown. Yeah, yeah, I was meeting people. Yeah. I was with my friends, doing my thing. Do my thing. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm too busy for that. Yeah. Right. So fair enough. So and how long have you been in real estate for? Uh, five years. Okay, so quite yeah. a, quite a while. And yeah. you're doing what primarily this area now, the Vaughan Woodbridge. No, Toronto's my main oh, area. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Vaughan, I would say second. Okay. Right. Because I live in Vaughan. And right. I also lived in Markham as well too, so I have an audience in Markham as well. A lot of friends there. Markham's pretty hot too, actually. Yeah, yeah. I like Markham. Yeah, that's interesting. Like, yeah. And the condos, the rates are going up. Yeah. You have inventory coming in. Prices are pretty steady. Yeah. It's right off the 404. No, downtown. it's a great. It's, it's a nice. great location. Yeah. Right. It's uh, not Toronto. That's not downtown Toronto. There's no uh, subway, but. Oh, yeah. that's true. Yeah. 
Really? They have no connection? But they got the GO train, which is uh, faster than the subway. Right. And it'll take you downtown. Yeah, exactly. Where does it go? Straight to Union from our, I yeah. guess? Yeah. yeah. Because we have that too, like Barry has the go train up to Barry. Yeah. For two, two hours, but yeah. like you do what you gotta do. Some yeah. people work in Toronto still live in Barry. Yeah. Like they just figure it's cheaper. They bought a house four or five years ago for 300 mm-hmm. grand, 400 grand in Barry. Yeah. Sold their million dollar house in Vaughn. Yeah. I'm like, fuck it, I'll take the go train every day. I only yeah. have six, seven more years of working and then yeah. they're done. I lived so in Bradford for a bit too. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, because I wanted to get out of the city, but I didn't want to go too far. Right. I wanted, to, I wanted like some land. So I moved uh, moved to 27 and 88 beside the Bonner Golf Course. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Had 10 acres of land. Nice I was just there oh, just shit. chilling, like working oh from God, there. No That's how I got a lot of ideas because yeah. when I was doing the parties and stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to think of part, like, yeah. like, you know, theme parties and yeah. all that kind of stuff. So, But I did a lot in Barry as well. Interesting. I did a lot of events in Barry. Like with clubs? Yeah. What clubs? Sound Empire. Oh, I heard. Oh, actually, who was I talking to? Uh, Wait, it wasn't you that was part owner of it. I, you know what? I had a small percentage, but like it was mostly I did. I did like it was me. It was me. Well, yeah, it was you. probably yeah. Because I remember someone telling me they owned a small percentage of Sound Empire. There was there was more than one owner, right? But I, bumped into the other I just focused on doing events. Doing events. I put together yeah. a really big goal party once that did a lot of people. Nice. Um, so you have that in your blood. Yeah. So how does that translate to real estate? Oh, it's they both complement each other, man. It's so just how, how you're dealing with that? people. Huh? How can you take that and use it in real estate? I'm doing it already. What do you do? <laughs> secrets. All your secrets. How do you, secrets. How do you? How do you get these events? How do you? Because you you're putting together events, bringing tons of people out, bringing tons mm. of value. What's that equivalent in the real estate world? Do you bring people together for events? Like, what do you do? Well, I'm not I'm not doing the event thing mm-hmm. because. You know, I, I like I like going, you know, meeting people in person, yep. talking to them. Being social is key, um, but marketing projects, I, I sell pre-construction, right? So yep. Yep. basically when I was marketing a, a, an event, yep. now I'm marketing projects in that way. That's all I'm doing. I'm just switching yeah, yeah, the yeah. Uh, same way. Yeah. So give us an example of that. So if, not to give away too many secrets, but if I'm a realtor and I have a new construction project and yeah. I'm struggling, maybe I'm a new realtor and it's my first yeah. time doing it. What's in, in your mind the most effective thing I have yes. to hit? What's that one thing I gotta do? First of all, a couple things. Pre construction's not for everyone, right? Why is that? Because builders pay really late. So you need. Um, that's why there. I, I don't know like, why there's not a lot of people in the business. Like, right, before, right. In the, the pre con niche, right? Um, but um, yeah, when I got into it, there wasn't a lot of people selling pre construction. I think for that reason, you have to front a lot of money in marketing. Right. Oh, so you front all the marketing. You have to front a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so people will do it. They'll start spending yeah. money on Google Ads, which that's like overpriced now, right? It's getting there, yeah. Sometimes it's what, 15, 20 bucks a click. In that market? Certain yeah. projects, yeah. right? Because yeah. there's yeah. so yeah. much competition. Yeah. yeah. So many people are like trying to sell a specific yeah. project. So realtors get excited, they're like, oh this is easy, I'll do it. And then after yeah. Yeah. you know, they're they're stuck like, because it takes yeah. forever to get paid or yeah. a project cancels, yeah. they're screwed. So if, if Google Ads isn't working, what have you been using that's been successful? Like Facebook, YouTube, any of that stuff? No, it, it, it's just everything, man. Yeah. All of it. All of it. You have to do whatever whatever works. Every every project has a different market. Yeah. You have to figure it out. Because I like I just see like in my mind, I could just yeah. be naive, but I see a huge potential in like Facebook ads, YouTube ads that are um, getting like for example, if you took like we do a strategy a lot. I think it worked better a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I'd be curious to see. Because I, I yeah. might try. Because we're gonna take uh, that guy I mentioned, Irwin. Uh, I know he's taking. I can't give details yet, but he's gonna be taking a, a new construction development. I yeah. think he's getting like forty units or something yeah. there uh, that are gonna be exclusives, and we're gonna have to market that. But my theory is like we do a bunch of stuff with a bunch of clients and industries. And one strategy we used is yeah. we do this three-step strategy. So one is we run what we call an awareness type campaign. So we'll, let's say a really high-end proper video of that space, of the lifestyle, the luxury, whatever. Brand awareness campaign? Brand awareness. On so Facebook. We, on Facebook. So we run that, yeah. but we're able to get views for sometimes less than a cent of views. We get 100,000 views every $1,000 yeah. we spend. Yeah. But then what we do is we retarget everyone who watches more than half of those yeah. with a specific offer or a consultation or book a tour. Yeah. Yeah. And then we follow up with people who engage with that and keep hitting them across all channels. And that lets us do that whole process very, instead of just running traffic to the offer or to the call to action, 
it makes it way, way, way. So every time we do that, it's like way cheaper. We usually get twice the result half the cost. I'm like, what if I took that but did that on a new construction build? So we're gonna have to probably yeah. in the next like six months. Yeah. We're gonna have a bunch of units to move. And I'm like, no one's doing that. I just think it'd be interesting. Like I can target exact ages, demographics, and all these jobs. People doing that. There's people doing that. I don't see it. Like on YouTube yeah. even, like in Toronto? Not not really YouTube, but there's people doing that. Interesting. You'll see when you do it, the price per click is gonna be expensive. Yeah? yeah. I'd love to play with that because I never got to market like a new development yet. The, the thing is, you have to figure out what area you're 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 in, and then right. you, start, you set up a marketing campaign for that specific that area. area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because certain areas, like Barry, when I did events, was ten years behind. Yeah. Ten years behind. Like yeah. I did a glow party there. All I did was I got a a, um, a wristband, <laughs> a glow wristband. I printed out. I got sorry. I got two thousand made. Yeah, yeah. I went to um, what is it called? Not Sheridan College, Georgian College. Yeah, yeah, that's one up there. I gave them all out to promoters or like people that work there that and work stuff there, yeah, and then yeah. students. And then after like these things went out like crazy. So then I got another 2000 uh, done and I gave them out again. And then uh, they ended up opening up another venue for for the event. It was like 2000 people. Wow. Very crazy. I'm not from Barry. I'm That's crazy. Yeah. I know and nothing they, about Barry. They probably never seen a glow party before. I don't think they have. Really I don't know. Right. I did a paint party there which was very successful at the ranch. The ranch, yeah, that's yeah. fucking big. What about what's the other one called? The Johnson's Residence or something? You seen that one? No. There's one that recently I that think probably opened up. I don't, I don't know. I that, haven't been there. That in like one's so been long. crushing it lately. Yeah. yeah. It's the, their whole theme is it's a house party. Okay. So inside has rooms and oh, kitchens. So and that you see that? It, yes. It's yeah, just a Addison yeah. house. Yeah. But it's called the Johnson Residence. Got it, yeah, yeah. And they hired a professional promoter, but he's also yeah. the theme and brand of the the club. And his yeah. name's uh, Jeeves. Okay. And he wears like the butler. He's a butler. The the, the, the yeah, yeah, yeah. are away. Yeah. And he promotes. He sells. You can text them by bottle service. Nice. And like you. Even on you go New Year's, there's lineups down the street yeah. for people getting into this thing. Like every weekend, I'm like, it's fucking Barry. Like, That's why? Awesome. Yeah, but great. but they're crushing it. Like yeah. they're crushing it. And then I started seeing Facebook ads. Yeah, yeah. super creative. Yeah. Like, they literally did one where they they filmed two points of view. One's the, this girl with her friends. One's a guy with their friends walking through Barry Waterfront. And one day they bump into each other and they kind of give that look. Yeah. Then the next day they're in the club and they find each other and then yeah. it like shows them texting each other and like coming yeah. back. And yeah. oh, last night was great. I'm like, cool, like that's so especially for Barry. Yeah, like good, yeah, good. you see that in Toronto, but yeah. you don't see that in Barry. Yeah, so it's like no, you don't even see that in Toronto, man. No, eh? No, you don't see that. In Toronto. So we got a lot of ways to go then. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a big up. Obviously, you see an opportunity in social because you're using it. And like it takes a lot of time and energy, right? So what do you think about it? I don't know. Uh, what do I think about social? Yeah. I don't Does think it it's for that? everyone to be honest. No. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I think mm. it's if if you. You have to spend a lot of time. It's a yeah. huge commitment. It's an ex- yeah. and it's another job. Yeah, that's 100%. what it is. If you're not if you're not using it properly, yeah, yeah utilizing it properly, yeah. not a lot. Like, look, I talk to people people directly from Facebook, right? And they're telling me how to do stuff, and I'm yeah. I'm saying no, that's not how you do it. Yeah, hundred percent. Because they don't know how to sell. Hundred percent. Right. I think hundred percent. So, agree. like, yeah. it's it, it's not for everybody. Like, you know, it's. You know Gary V, all these guys promote it. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, true. Yeah. Like yeah, it, it yeah. works. It does work if you know what you're doing. If you know what you're doing, it's the keyword. If you do not have proper content right. going out there, like like you said, that video that these guys did, that venue yeah. and Barry yeah. did, right? It's genius. It's genius. Genius. But if you don't have proper content, it's not going to work. I agree, actually, to some degree, and that's yeah. honestly like our business is built on that. Yeah. Because it's built under the principle that people know it's important. Yeah. But can't do it on their own. Exactly. But have the money to pay someone to do it. Yeah. And then you can have a team like ours working full time. That's all we do. Yes. And it makes sense. I get it. Yeah. Because I think I mean I th- I think the power is there. Like we've seen crazy yeah. results. Like yeah. we've seen like we've done things that when we had clients will blow them away. Like they've tried every other advertising medium. Yeah. And the results we get for such ridiculously low cost. Yeah. Like we had clients that were used to running TV commercials and radio ads. And they're spending two, three hundred yeah. grand a year. Yes. And we're doing the same reach, same sales, same yeah. leads yeah. with like thirty grand. Yeah. It's ridiculous. So there's something there. Yeah. But but it depends most people struggle. what market. Remember, real estate is super competitive. That's the hardest there's one. There's a I lot found. of people with yeah. a lot of money that will spend money. Yeah. And they will spend fifty bucks a click. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like that 100%. you're you're not dealing with 100%. like 50 cent clicks. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's a different animal. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I found, actually, it's funny you say this, I found real estate to be the hardest one. It is. Anytime we've worked with individual agents, it's yes. been very hard. If it we is. can work with big teams with big budgets and a lot of, like, clout of their own in the market, it's a lot easier. Yes. Um, but when you work with an individual agent with a small budget, very, very hard because there's so many other realtors doing the same thing. Yeah. It's a popular career, right? It's a popular industry. Yeah. And well, let me, let me tell you something doing. about real estate that, yeah. that's very important. This will help you. Okay. Like, I think with your clients is that there's... I think in the GTA, 
the, with Trev, I think there's around 50,000 registered wow. realtors. Okay. Out of 50,000 registered realtors, yeah, yeah. there's only 7,500, I believe, which is 15% that did over 10 transactions. Oh, wow. Okay, That's so it. even though there's huge competition, They're there's only good. a little bit of, a, a small amount of people that are actually doing it. Yeah. So Unreal. no, I believe it. I believe it. Yeah, that's a, that's a wow. stats. So if you go on Trev, you can see. Yeah, it. we can see that. Right? That's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. So they what? They just get it because they want their license and don't actually. A lot of people just park their license. I think people get it. Like I don't know, right? I'm just guessing. Sure. I think people get their uh, real estate license because they they feel they can back they can use it as a backup plan, right? Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, but I won't. Like you seem like a crushing it. Like I've, I've met yeah. a lot of great agents, brokers, yeah. like. It's just, you've got to do the stuff you're doing. You've got yeah, to be yeah. proactive. Like, you look like you hustle. Like, that's, I think, yeah. what a lot of... I think a lot of people, from what I've seen, or I've known friends who've got into it, thinking it was going to be way easier than it was. Exactly, yeah. Oh, we're yeah. going to get a house. I know my friends are going to buy a house. I'm going to get yeah. this much money on one deal. Yeah. It's not. Like, you've got to... Unless I'm wrong, but like, yeah. from what I see, you've got to hustle. You have to. You have to. Yeah. yeah. That's nice. And that, that's, again, that's... Not everybody has that hustle, right? Oh, yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah. But you're doing well. You're doing well. Yeah, no, it's great. Like, I, look, I, I got into real estate because I wanted to buy a venue. I wanted to buy a club, and all these club owners were shady, and I didn't I yeah. didn't do it right yeah. because of that. I, yeah. I had money. I bought in Florida, and I I knew a lot about real estate because my dad would always teach me as well, a kid. Cool. He was an agent, but he used to, like, like buying uh, and flipping homes. Yeah, yeah. Right? So I learned from that so at a young age. Yeah. Never liked construction. Always hated it. Yeah. Like, I'm not a handy guy. Yeah. Uh, one day I saw a sign. I was driving with my wife. Uh, get your real estate license. I yeah. called the number and I got it. <laughs> so, I, for it, me, man. I can jump into anything. I, I, it's not that I like, just because I like real estate, I'm doing it. You need to have something that you that's going to make you, make you your, your income and you can enjoy it. I enjoy yeah. doing the marketing yeah. part of it. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. When I sell stuff... I'm not just saying this, like, I don't care if I sell something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's my attitude people have. Like, right. they see that, right. they, they, they right. sense that vibe. Yeah. This guy doesn't care if he's gonna sell it or he's gonna sell me this, this property or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I that's guess great. that works. But 100%. I'm not really a good salesperson in that sense because I don't push people. <laughs> You know what I mean? But that's like, almost what makes you a good salesperson. That's, <laughs> that's what the I, funny part. That's that's what I don't. You get. are a good yeah. salesperson. The bad salespeople are the ones pushing like yeah. that, right? Yeah. You're a great salesperson yeah. because. Like I think to be successful at anything, like anytime I see someone successful in any industry, mm -hmm. I relate to either they have great sales or great marketing skills or both. Yeah. That's if you yeah. have that, it doesn't yeah. matter like we can put you right now selling yachts. You're yeah. gonna sell, you're gonna market, you're gonna put great events yeah. together, yeah. Yeah. you're gonna push it. Yeah. You know, you, dealership, it doesn't matter what industry you go yeah. in. If yes. you have that mentality, yes. even B2B, even large corporate, you'll yes. find a way yes. to get to the top because yeah. you know how to sell and selling is exactly just connecting with people. And you do that. Yeah, exactly. Right? My, my thing for my end, in order for me to build my team, right, right, is I would need better salesperson. People that are better than me. Like there's yeah, yeah. realtors out there that will like like do circles around me. Yeah. Right? But I like when it comes to marketing, I can do circles around them. Right. Yeah. Right? Right. So there is, honestly, I see that. That's a big weakness in a lot of like brokerages, teams, individual like marketing is weak. Yes. In the real estate. Where they're all trying to do something, but yeah. it's just not yeah. like they're almost when I look at it, it's like five, six years behind. Yeah, exactly. If they're still doing stuff, it's like, why are you still doing that? Like yeah. you gotta change it up, right? Yeah. But see what I'm used to is when I was younger, putting together these big parties, dealing with celebrities, right, right. you know, cool. booking all these artists, yeah. right? Um, I'm used to big budgets and putting things together, right? For yeah. example, Smirnoff once gave us like $25,000 to yeah. put together an event. Wow. What am I going to do for them? Like we did all this crazy shit, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, so. Transition that in. Yeah, it's, it's the same, it's the same kind of aspect right and, and and another thing too when i'm marketing stuff i yeah. know how to save money and i i'm selling at the same time so huh. when you're selling and you're doing marketing you understand how to market oh yeah yeah i agree i agree right if you're just yeah. marketing yeah. the project and you're not selling it you yeah. won't understand what the client wants yeah, yeah. well because a lot, a lot of people think that marketing is just getting the thing that they're selling in front of the people they want to buy it. Yeah. It's not just about getting it's in science. front of. You, exactly. It's a science. It's, yeah. it's, it's the persuasion. It's the relationship. It's the trust. It's the, yeah, yeah, yeah. how do we move them? Like, what's their pain point? What do they need from yeah. us? Yeah. And move them through that. Not just show yeah. them. Right? And then another important thing is that if you're marketing something to someone, right? Yeah. Let's say they, you know, you do an amazing job, an incredible job getting them leads. Yeah. But they don't know how to close. 100%. Yeah, we deal with that all the time. That's we deal with that all the time. Yeah, and people ask us if like we get, like we'll say okay, what's our retainer? It's like three k a month. 
and they'll say, okay, if after three months you don't see results, do you guys like have a money back? I'm like, no, because I can do everything on my end. If you guys don't pick up the phone, which always happens, yeah, they won't I'm not up. giving you, like, I'll bring you what I gotta bring you, but if you don't pick up the phone and sell, yeah. it's on you. Exactly. And you'd be so surprised how often that happens. Yeah. Where we'll look back through stats and we'll do these campaigns, mm -hmm. and there's people that are emailing not getting responded to, there's Facebook messages not getting responded to, yeah. there's people opting in for calls that are never getting called back. Yes, yes. Like, I don't get it. Yeah. But they're paying us to do that and they don't follow up. Yeah, yeah. And I like and it, I think it's just a human nature thing because we're in the online training space a bit. We have yeah. some online courses and we sell B2B to companies. I have a 60% rate of people who pay for the courses online, make an account, and never again log in. Yeah. I think they just feel good paying for things and they want to put in the work. Yeah. <laughs> like if you if you bought it, it means you got the result. So if you if you hire a marketing agency, oh I did my part, that's my yeah, work. Yeah. If I buy a course, oh I got the results already. If I buy the fat loss pills and the work, if I buy the gym membership, I got the results already. Yeah. But they never actually show up. Yes. Yes. That's, the that's how it is. How many people get a gym membership and yeah. don't even go, right? Yeah. But they feel good because they yeah. bought the gym. They membership. feel good. They have the gym membership. Oh, the, I'm gonna yeah. go tomorrow. I'm gonna go yeah. tomorrow. They never go. Yeah. Right? Crazy. So, yeah. It's just it's just how it is, man. It's uh it's messed up, but but it's yeah. the living. So if you were giving tips, if you were gonna break down something real quick. <laughs> What would you say, because there's so many ways to market as a realtor, yes. right? You can go everywhere from social media, billboards, yeah. magazines, door to door. Yeah. What's been your most effective meeting single people. method? Meeting people. There you yeah. go. Number Networking? One. Networking, meeting people is number one. I say the same thing. Yes. What's number like, two? Number two is the follow up, following up people, following up with the people yeah. you met and yeah. making sure that you know your, your email marketing is important as well. Yeah. Yeah. That you're emailing them yeah. uh, projects or whatever you're doing. It's, it yeah. depends the niche you're in. Yeah. Yep. You have to first, as a realtor, you have to figure, if you're getting into the business, yep. right? Um, you have to figure out what niche you want to get in, yep. into. Like, if you get into commercial, it's completely different than Reaper Construction. Reaper Construction is completely different than resale. Yep. Like, they all have different ways of, of promoting, you know, of, and doing marketing strategies, right? Like, you have, to, you have to figure out what you want to do. If you want to get into the resale game, I'd go door knocking or I, you know, I would do the old school stuff because a lot of people are right now what's hot is social media. It's yeah. hot. It works. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. too many people are doing that now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah so and yeah. people are getting tired of seeing ads, so you gotta figure out different things. Fresh. Think outside the box yeah. at yeah. all times. Maybe less people are doing flyer campaigns. So yeah. get into the flyer campaigns, yeah. right? Like yeah. depends the budget you have too. Yeah. Like it depends what kind of budget you're working on and, and you know if you have another job or how you want to structure it, you just want to do it part time. So every situation is different, right? So. Yeah, and I'm, I'm a big fan of that. I'm a big fan of like, you shouldn't just rely on one thing. I think too many people, like as much as I'm, I'm a yeah. owner of social media, 100%. I was just talking to him recently about yeah. it and we were saying like, people think they're gonna start a business or become yeah. a realtor or whatever it is. Yes. And day one, I'm gonna go on social media, I'm gonna sell from there. Yes. But you have no network, you have no contacts, exactly. you have no value around you. you have, Social yeah. media is fantastic when you have something of yes. value to actually promote. Like, when you just start yeah. and you know nobody and nothing, yes. it's kind of like, who is that guy and why am I seeing your ads? 100%. But when you're the guy that's all over the community, that's at all the dinners, that's all, all the network events, that's everywhere all the time, that's a great tool to add on and build the brand farther. Yes. Which is like where we like we usually yeah. try to work with like the top tier. Like if we're gonna realtor, yes. it's gonna be one of the top three or four in yeah. the city. That's all we really do. But because we want that. Yeah, and what right. I recommend for somebody that has a budget to do this is to hire somebody like yourself right. or a company. Right. Because what will happen is they can focus on going to the events, going to whatever, yep. dealing with their clients Content. day to day because if like, like I said, Facebook, Instagram, yeah. all this stuff is another is another job. Oh, 100%. Yeah. It can get overwhelming yeah. Yeah. and it will it will stop you from getting yeah. deals done. Yeah. yeah, 100%. Like the only reason why it comes natural to me is because I've been doing it my right. entire life. Right? So right. I was one of the first people to get Corrado or Ranjo, and that's a common name yeah, 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 yeah. on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. Like I got it when it first came out. It's crazy. Right? I was running ads when it first came out. That's I'm verified on Facebook. That's right. Nuts, eh? Yeah, that's not easy. No, so like, it's um that that's just how it is, man. Like they look at like Facebook's not gonna just verify anybody. No, right. Next is Instagram. Yeah, you're almost ready for that. You should be ready for that. We'll too. see. I don't know. <laughs> Have you tried it? No, not yet. Oh, you yeah. do it, man. It's easy. Yeah. They let you apply every thirty days. Yeah, yeah. It takes two seconds. Yeah. I think you're you're up for it. Like you passed the 10k mark already. Yeah. You're at what 11 something now? 11 nine. Almost. Uh, well, my actually 11, my nine. followers have been well, going up significantly because I've been. Why is that? Another thing too is important yeah. is like you know people message you and stuff like 
I get a lot of messages from like younger people right, who want to get right. into real estate. Yeah. I actually spend the time every day. Wow. Call like on the phone with them or it's just messaging them back, giving them advice for free. Yeah. See, that's good because a lot yeah. of people don't do that. Yeah. Because you're busy. Like it is hard. I get it. It's another job. Yeah. That's why they need somebody like you. Yeah. No, I right? I agree. So I agree because like especially like these bigger, yeah. Agents, especially with teams, like yeah, they're they have to decide anywhere in business you have yeah. to decide where you're most like where do you have the most value personally yes. where do you bring the most value yes if it's presenting deals if it's pitching investors if it's net you have to stick to that yeah it doesn't mean you ignore everything else it means you hire other people exactly. as you know to do those pieces right of course so i, I like that you said that because that, that's so true like, yeah because you know a lot of these guys and these big players um you know i don't want to mention too many names yeah, but yeah, yeah. they say you know what we we, you, you do it yourself, you save a lot of money. Yeah, but if you have time, you do it yourself. But yeah. like, if you're doing it yourself, it's just not worth it. Like, You're taking away from something else. You're taking away from yeah, something else. That you're stronger at. Yeah. It makes no sense. Yeah. Like even, even large, like even now, I won't say specifically what offices are people, but yeah. like CBRE, for example, is a big brand, we all know them. Certain offices of theirs are coming to us and we're trying to do deals with them now because even CBRE, which is historically, like even yeah. their commercial divisions we're dealing with, Historically, very just word of mouth, the high end, like upper echelon, they don't do social media. Now they do. Yeah. So now they're coming to us with like, how do we build personal brands for our team leaders? How do we do this? How do we do that? And they're looking at agencies like us to help support that because they even know it's becoming important. Yeah. So, but they have the money, 10 billion a year kind of money. So, so they yeah. have it. Um, but that's why they've grown so big because their team leaders, like the guys running teams within that, know that they have one or two things they're great at and they're very good at hiring others and delegating the things they're not. Yeah. And that's why they've been so successful, yes. right? So like, for example, one of the guys we're talking to, yeah. he's doing these deals that are like massive, like 20, 30, 40, 50 yeah, million dollar yeah. deals on yeah. his own. Yeah, yeah. Do you think he should stop and get some Instagram selfies? No, like let us build yeah. it, right? Yeah, but another thing too is that it's personality that's very important. Mm. They can have all the money in yes. the world, Yes. but yeah. if they're not good yeah. on camera, yeah. if they're not good at engaging with people, I agree. they don't have that persona, they're, they're just throwing, they're throwing away money. Yeah, That's yeah. how it is. I actually agree. We've dealt with that a lot. We've had some yeah. interesting issues where we've had clients. And, and then they're going to gonna blame you for it. Yeah. Right? So, so, so the way we hit it is like not yeah. everyone's strategy is the same. Yeah, exactly. Like if we're with someone like you or like he's great on camera, he knows how to talk, we yeah. know what to do. If we got someone who's more introverted, quiet, shy, yeah. we couldn't do the same thing. Yes. But that doesn't yes. mean we can't market. Of course. There's probably like, there's we're, different ways of doing right. it. Yeah. We could focus more on, on the, the city itself, the pictures, the, the properties, the listings, the activities, his team. We yeah. could maybe train someone on his team to get more comfortable being on it's camera. It's harder to build a brand right. that way. It is. Right? The but easiest way is to do it. Exactly. 100%. You can still do it. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. But it's been done. Especially it's if it's been done. Especially if it's if it's projects, if you have if you have really beautiful projects. Like people who sell two, three, four, five million dollar homes, yes. those things, I don't want to say they sell themselves, yeah. but they get a lot of attention on their exactly. own, yeah. right? The right media. So yeah. That's yeah. powerful too. Yeah. But that's you know, it's, it's not for everyone, right? No. And that's some true. people, some people sure. have, you know, different ways of getting their clients. They don't need social media. 100%. 100%. They don't need it. It's just a waste of time. They're actually going to make less money if they go on social media. Yeah. There's people that want to stay discreet and they want to do their thing. Yeah. They don't want to be on it. No, right? it's not for everybody. It's, it's not for everyone. It's for yeah. the people who are primed and ready, who have yeah. the money, who are... I don't want to say loud, but who are extroverted, exactly. who can sell, yes. who have a message, who have yes. proven value, yes. who want to expand that at scale. Exactly. Yeah. That's important. Yeah. And that's why like, yeah. we get we get probably like yeah. 25 to 30 inquiries I say a week. Yes. We work with about two of those a month. Yes. So like yeah. we do filter out a lot because yeah. it's not right for everybody, but when it is right for somebody, it can be really powerful. Yeah. Exactly. So that, that's great. That's, yeah. So I'm glad you agree at least on that. That's good. Yeah. yeah good. For good sure. stuff. For sure. So yeah. what else? What else is going on with you, man? Nothing much, man. Just, uh, you know, just... Same old, man. Just what's, the, what's the plan for 2019? 2019? Any big things coming? Uh, you know what? I really, I want to see how the real estate market plays yeah. out, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, because it's uh, changed a lot from 2017 to 2019. 2017, you're working on something, it sells right away. So that's why a lot of people are getting into pre-construction now. They think it's easy, but it's right. super hard. <laughs> Actually, I want to get into other things because pre-construction's a lot harder, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. Yeah, I agree. So, what do you think is gonna happen? Like, you don't have to give an exact prediction, but I'm just curious. Yeah. Where do you think the market's heading? What can I expect as an investor myself for the next year, two years? Um, I think what's happening is you can, you know, if you go online, do some research. Yeah. Canada's letting like a lot of people, hundreds of thousands of people into yeah. the country. The yeah. gates are pretty much open. Yeah. As long as they have, I think it's five hundred thousand dollars or eight hundred. I don't know the exact number. Yeah. They can come in, and a lot of these people want to buy something. Yeah. 
So if you're gonna, a builder has to approve to get a, a permit to build something, it takes forever. It's like pulling teeth yeah. getting stuff yeah. from the city. Yeah. yeah. Right? So if there's not enough, there's not enough um, uh, the units, um, housing for all these people that are coming into our country. Yeah. So right now, I think 2019, 2020 is gonna be slow, yeah. right? Um, there's a lot of other things that can happen. It's out of our control, yeah. right? Governments implementing like 100%. different laws and all yeah. this stuff yeah. and rules and regulation. Yeah. And we yeah. saw that in 2017. Yeah. But let's say if it's just real estate and nothing like that happens, I think 2019, 2020 will be slow and then it'll gradually go up. It won't be like a significant jump unless there's so many people coming into the country. Right. Right. Like I'm saying like 500,000 people are coming to Canada. Yeah. If, if yeah. 250,000 of those people come to Toronto, Toronto is like fucked. Done. Because we don't have the infrastructure for all these people, Interesting. right? And rentals are, are gonna go insane. So if you own a condo and you're renting it, Blow up. just keep it. Keep it. Keep it. Even in Barrie. Um, <laughs> I would sell it. Step back. Honest. I would sell it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's my honest yeah, opinion. Yeah. yeah. I would. I would sell that. That's what we're planning. Sell it and exactly. buy something in Toronto. Yeah. That's exactly what. That's we're what I would do. Like, if yeah. you want my advice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's exactly what we're doing. Because I mentioned yeah. earlier, I had that condo, right? Yes. Um, like we made so much in equity. I don't want to risk yeah. just holding it. Like we yeah, already yeah. made yeah. money, right? Don't. I wouldn't leverage it. I would just sell it, move on, buy something in Toronto. And another advantage that you yeah. may have over somebody else. A lot of people buy precon because they don't have the money now. Right. They're predicting they're gonna have the money down the road. Right. A lot of people that sign deals right. will not even right. get approved for a mortgage. Right. Like it's pulling teeth getting a, a mortgage pre-approval letter done from the bank. They need like, you know, like uh, people to help them sign and all this stuff, right? Or really? their parents gotta give them money to get a, it's, it, yeah, it's tough. It's, I've heard it's tough right now. So if you have, if you have money and yeah. you're able to buy um, assignments, assignments is another big, uh, big thing to get into because you can buy something that somebody is not a unit that somebody cannot close. Got it. So what happens? Do you know what happens in that? That's. I'm not super familiar actually. With okay, that. so that's the one thing I'm not. Let's say I bought a condo and it, you know two down two years down the road. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's about to close. Yeah. I can't close. Okay. What happens is the builder will keep my my fifteen yeah, percent yeah. if I, I, I don't close on it. Yeah. So if I have an assignment. I can assign that unit, even if I have to give it away for what I bought it for, at least I don't lose money. Uh, so that that's a very important incentive to have. The majority of the new construction condos have that anyways, a free assignment. Sometimes you have to pay for it, huh. but as long as you know you have that so you can get out, yeah. Yeah. you know, if you're buying and you don't know if you're gonna get a mortgage, but for, for somebody that has leverage look for and, has, that. and has money, yeah. those are really good opportunities to get into. But would, would, like if I bought that, would I have to buy that out front or would the bank still be able to give me a mortgage to The way buy it works assignment? is you're basically going to give the money, whatever deposits um, the buyer had with the builder, yeah, yeah. you're going to have to give them the deposits. And if it's, let's say they want $50,000 appreciation, sometimes you're going to have to give, that, give them that $50,000 up front or you can negotiate a deal where you're going to give them that $50,000 like on closing to the previous owner. The yeah, to buyer. the previous okay. buyer. Yeah, exactly. Got it. So you understand what occupancy stage is, right? The occupancy what is stage? It? The occupancy stage? Maybe. So when you buy <laughs> when you buy a condo, yeah. you have like three to six months for everybody to move in. Right? I do know because actually they were just because when we got our condo, they, that happened on the first one that was already done. Yes. Where we so that was weird because I never experienced that until about last year. Yes. Obviously, I'm pretty new to it too. But we got the condo. It was done, but. We couldn't take it over yet. We couldn't close yeah. in a mortgage on it because yeah. we had to just pay them, like yes. some sort of rental fee or yeah. whatever. Yeah. For so like that, that's why four months. That's why I did a lot yeah. of videos gotcha. because I, I tell a lot of my buyers. I didn't know that before. I tell a lot of my buyers, go to my Instagram or yeah. Yeah. and just watch all my videos because yeah. it'll, it'll, it'll teach you everything you need to know about yeah. buying yeah. Uh, a new pre construction condo. Another important thing is development charges and levies. Yeah. Right? When you're buying a, a new condo, if you don't have that, if it's not capped, that could be an unlimited number. Like you literally have no limit. They can charge you hundred thousand dollars. You have to pay for it. What? Yeah. Development really? charges and levies, right? That's what it's called. So you have to cap that in every oh, shit. every unit. But interesting. See, yeah, there's a lot of stuff you don't know. Like even me, like I wasn't totally blind. Like we've been doing the investment stuff for a while, but we've been doing multifamily residential. Yes. Like condos was kind of a new thing. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't know half of that stuff. 
Like when they're like, oh, you got to pay us a fee every month now. Yeah. And I'm like, what do you mean? I'll just buy it. I'm like, well, let's take possession. Yeah. No, you can't. We got to get to a certain occupancy. I'm like, so that's dumb. <laughs> and another thing for investors, if you're living in it, it's a little bit different, right? right? But if you're an investor and you want to make money right away, right. some buildings actually have taken years to close. So you're in that occupancy, you're paying that mortgage really? for a long time. So during that time frame, you have to make sure, if you're an investor, that you have right to lease during occupancy. Right. So you can lease it out the minute you get your keys. Technically, you don't even own the unit until you yeah. close. The builder owns the unit. Yeah. So he can tell you to do whatever he wants unless you have that amendment saying you have the right to lease during occupancy. So do they typically allow that to be negotiated? Like if I'm sitting down, I get a contract, Sometimes. can I yeah. say, hey, that's not in here, put it in? Some builders don't even include that, and some do. Wow. I've sold in projects that they don't include it, but I've also sold those projects to the people that want to live in it. Crazy. So they don't care about that, right? But things could change. Like yeah. these buildings are being ready like three to four years. So yeah. you have to be careful when you're buying, right? And I think they're great investments because you're buying for the future. And Toronto has a great future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So that's why I like pre construction. Yeah. So I have a crazy strategy I want to run by you. Yeah. And Half people will object to it because it sounds weird and they never think about it. Half will go, oh, that's actually pretty smart. I've seen that. I'm curious what your thoughts are. So from an investor standpoint, yeah. even a lot of the business guys I follow, like Grant Cardone and those guys, they talk a lot about, I don't want to mess this up, but they say a lot about rent where you live and own where you rent. Yeah. And what they're getting at is your primary residence that you live in, rent that from somebody. Yes. And with the remaining capital you have, buy an investment property yeah, yeah. and let someone else pay that down. Yes. So one, you get still the yeah. same benefit of That's owning. a great question. What do you think about that? Okay, so whatever Grant Cardone does, yeah. that's in the States. That's okay. in Florida. Okay. Florida has a completely different market than Toronto. Okay. In Toronto, you can make money flipping houses, buying a single detached home, buying a condo. You did it, I did yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Right? In Florida, you can't. Right. I bought a house in Florida during right. the market crash. Hmm. Right? I bought it in Florida during the market crash. After or before? No, uh, after, after, <laughs> okay, right? Good. So I saw, basically, yeah. I'll tell you I'll tell you a story. Um, yeah. My friend was gonna buy a condo, not a condo, sorry, a house in Florida. Yeah, yeah. I went with him, yeah. I saw what was happening, and um, I went to the gym one day, and I was yeah. talking to these residents that live in the subdivision, right? It's yeah. a gated community. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, our house, our mortgage is worth more than the value of our home. And I'm like, so why do you still have your house? Like, <laughs> like why don't you just walk away? And they're like, yeah, that's probably what we're going to do. I felt bad Man. saying that, to be honest, Man. right? But then thought about it. I'm like, look, this person, these people bought these houses for five, 600 grand. Now they're selling for 150, 180, <laughs> 200. That's terrible. Yeah. Holy oh, shit. So I'm like, I'm going to buy one of these things. Yeah. At that time, that was when I had my money saved up to buy a club. Yeah. 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 I'm going to buy one of these things. At the time, our dollar was actually better than the U.S. by a little bit. Right. Okay. Yeah. I exchanged it. It went up. It went, it went up like the property three years later. I had that house rented out for two, almost $2,000 a month. It was a single detached bungalow, 2,100 square feet, four bedrooms, beautiful house. And how much in a gated community? 198. Wow. So you're getting yeah. so two G's a month on 198. Yes. Okay. That's so, a whole different world, man. Yes. Wow. The only thing about the U.S., the Canadian banks, they don't care about what you have in the states. You can't leverage that property and bring the money here. Not at all. Eh? Unless you get a mortgage over there, you get a line of credit over there, bring and the, money bring the money back. So what I did was, I'm like, I've already made 33% on the exchange. Right. The, the property went up $80,000 yeah. in US. So I just brought the money over here, I bought pre-construction. Uh, so that, it's dead money. To have money over there renting it out, even though I was getting good money, good rent, I, I'm, in, I'm in real estate here, so I'm like, I have to make money here. Right. So what Grant Cardone focuses on, yeah, the yeah. markets in the states, in Florida. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or Texas or yeah, wherever. Yeah. Right? It's, it's Toronto's a completely different market. I don't think he'll know how to, like, he'll, he'll have to understand, really understand it here. Like, I don't know if he can do what he does uh, sure, in Florida sure. and bring that here. So, but I don't think it'll work. So how do you, so, let's say, let's say I actually give a case study. So in my case, let's say I have the money to buy a $750,000 home. Let's say yes. I can afford $750,000. That's yeah. what I'll get approved on. And instead of, I sell the condo up there and I come down here and instead of taking that and buying a home to live in, I take that and I buy roughly two wartime bungalows in Hamilton and convert those into multifamilies. So four units now, yeah. it's probably gonna do about 2,800 combined each in rent. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we'll have, but then all my money's tied up. I can't buy a home now. So I just rent. What I would do What's there? What's the disadvantage there? Uh, first of all, what, like what I would do in that scenario is take one of the rooms for yourself, live uh, in it, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
if you're gonna have to rent something else, yeah. it doesn't make sense, yeah. right? Or another good good idea or suggestion for somebody that has a little bit more of a budget, right. go to an area like Mississauga or Toronto where you have a semi-detached home, you know, the old school ones, you can yeah. rent out the basement, yeah. maybe live in the basement or yeah. live upstairs and rent it out because that will help cover your, a lot of your mortgage right, right, or your right, expenses, right, right. right? And pay, some, pay for some stuff. Yeah. So um, what I think, like Grant Cardone, we'll go back to that, his strategy in the States is buying these massive complexes, yeah, which, huge, which yeah. are great ideas. Those are fantastic. I, yeah, I, I, I yeah. believe it. I would personally yeah. do that myself, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? But in Toronto, the audience of people that rent in Toronto is different than Florida. Renters in Florida are a lot better than here. Yeah, yeah. It's a different audience. I've it, heard of a lot of builders actually converting, investors converting entire buildings that were rental buildings yeah. now just to ownership, selling them off. The States is different. Crazy. First of all, their population in the U.S. is like 10 times. Huge. Huge yeah, compared yeah, to here. Yeah, you yeah, can't yeah, compare yeah, the U.S. Yeah. to Toronto right. and Canada. It's a different, it's a completely different market. Right. Yeah. If I had to do that in the States, 100%. But you can use Grant Cardone's strategy yeah. in buying condos here, sure. or buying like the type of houses you were saying. The multifamily stuff. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But the multifamily stuff, what I've learned with renting out houses, yeah. detached homes, yeah. semis, yeah. Yeah. I've done that, yeah. is that you actually get a better audience of people that want to rent condos hmm. than houses. Interesting. I don't know what it is, yeah. but yeah. more people would rather live in a condo, condos. when you're renting to people, they rather live in a condo because that audience of people don't want to worry about dealing with house problems. Yeah. Water coming in the basement. Yeah, for sure. Like, the, with, I wonder, the, with I a guess, condo, you're paying your maintenance fees. As a landlord, you have to cover the maintenance fees. Right. The rent, whatever, you get the, the money for the rent and you don't have to worry about anything. I guess I guess our like a lot of logic because we deal with and if you come to that event next week you'll see a lot of those guys are doing that whole multifamily strategy. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of their argument that they'll make is the cash flow. So when you get a house like in Hamilton, you can buy something for four some, like four yeah. fifty, and you can get two tenants in there. You can get three thousand plus in rent. Yeah. And there's no condo fees. So when you run your cash flow numbers, you might still even after like for example, we have I think now six six properties. Those are all done by property manager. We don't see them, we don't talk to anybody more or less. But they'll still, even with property manager, maintenance, taxes, fee, everything else, they'll still cash flow three, four hundred bucks a house, right? Plus the mortgage is getting paid down. And we found that very hard. Like when you look at condos, by the time we factor in the condo fees, just to rent it out, yeah. it's not as high. That, so I think that that's the argument they'll make a lot of. And I guess my argument in terms of what I was thinking- Have they invested in condos? Probably, I'd assume. I don't know. I say, I don't know, that's why I'm asking you. I don't know. I, 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 don't really, know. I really don't think so. Are the so. numbers quite high in condos yeah, as well? Yeah, so if you actually do the comparison, Yeah. And you look at the, like, let's say you're in a, you have a detached home. Yeah. Okay. You have yeah. a detached home. You sell your detached home, buy two units, rent one condo, live in the other. Yeah. Yeah. If you do the math in the long term, you make more money. It makes more sense financially. Mm. It's cheaper to do that. Right. Mm. If you have to calculate fixing a roof. Yeah, yeah. Water damages or whatever it is. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of shit that houses have. They have a lot of problems, right? Right. Um, it depends when you buy it too. Like, if you buy it at a, at a time when the market was slow, if you bought like ten years ago, five years ago, right. it's different. A house obviously makes more yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. But if you're gonna buy today, I think I would rather buy two condos than uh, two houses Interesting. or a house. Interesting. I live in a house because, like, I have a you know. You can yeah. No, no. I live in a house because I'm married. I have okay, two yeah, dogs. Yeah, yeah. We okay. can't really live in the city. Yeah, I would yeah, live yeah. in the city, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. That's that's what you yeah. know. I love Toronto, but uh, yeah, I live in Vaughan in a detached home. Yeah. But if it was up to me personally, I would live in a condo. Interesting. Yeah. I think that like that's me too. Like in my head, I think yeah. what I keep telling my my girlfriend is basically, I want to stay in a condo, whether downtown or whatever, yeah. until we have kids. Yes. When I have kids, I want a house. Because the condo is cool. Like, it's nice to have that. Like, I like condos. I have nothing against them. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out, I talk to a ton of people, a ton of investors, a ton of, I'm trying to figure out what is the best way to look at it all. So I just gather information from people like you, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so a lot of that, a lot of that does make sense. I'll throw one more wrench into it. Let's say my plan specifically. I see if you ever thought of this one. So my dream location when I have kids for detached, when I'm not in the condo, is King. I love King. Yes, beautiful. Here's a weird thing I found recently. If I bought a house, the average like decent detached home that's probably 2,800 square feet, sometimes 3,000, yeah. they're selling around what? Two point some, two point four? It all varies, 1.5, 1.3 okay. to all the way yeah, to yeah. 2 million. Yeah, yeah, so, two, so let, let's say I yeah. grab that dream house for $2 million. When I run the numbers, if I put 20% down, assuming I got approval of $2 million, yeah. if I put the deposit down, 400K. Sure, the mortgage remaining is around what? It's pretty it's massive. 
1.6. Massive, yeah. So the actual monthly payments, I can't remember what I was calculating, but they were like high. Your monthly payments are going to be around... Uh, Huge. It's going to be like 10 grand a yeah, month. Yeah, yeah. And so when I, when I went in the area and I found yeah. the same properties, I guess there's, we'll call them foreign investors buying these deals. Yes. Just because they want to park cash. Yeah. Those same houses that would cost me that much to own are being rented for 5,500, 6,000, 6,500. Yeah. And they don't care. I know who's buying that because no, yeah. no one else would take that loss. Exactly, exactly. And they're just parking cash. But then I'm looking at it, I'm like, well, wouldn't it make more sense then for me to get my dream home in King and just rent it for 6,000, take all that excess capital because I have $2 million I could have got yeah. and buy a six unit deal, an eight unit deal, a 10 unit deal that cash flows three, four, five grand every month. And then this thing is just, yeah, it's an expense, but it's not a liability. Then it's not yeah. it's not affecting my credit ratio. It's not affecting anything. And I'm putting out, ha- as opposed to buying it, yes. now I have no capital left to invest. Yeah. I have to make that 10K payment every single month. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think about that? I thought I found a loophole for a second. I don't um, know. Personally, I wouldn't, I wouldn't rent a place for five six thousand dollars myself. If you had, if you had that yeah. much money, so would you buy it then? If I had that much yeah. money, I'd have my own place. Obviously, interesting. Yeah. I'd have my own place because you're putting five six thousand dollars, right? If you have that kind of money, you're not going to have that kind of mortgage, mm. right? First of all, it's okay to have a mortgage if you're leveraging your property. You're yeah. getting a line of credit from your property. You're investing in other things. You're going to make it's money. Another from option. It. Yeah, yeah, like that. That I'd be okay with. It's yeah. Like pull, so you're, you you have the money. Let's say you know you have you have a lot of money. And yeah, yeah. You have a house. You can use your house to buy things. Hundred mm, percent. Right? I think that's getting tough though this year. Yeah, the cracking, the yeah, cracking of down. course, it's getting hard. Yeah, but yeah. like, if you have money, you, have, you show income. Yeah. You know, you're doing well. You can leverage your house. Why not? Yeah, yeah. So then it would make sense to just own it. Oh, right. right. Own it outright. But if I could only afford $200,000 down payment or 400000 If you could only afford a $400,000 down payment. Not the right house. If you do that, you're just you're just setting yourself up for failure. Interesting. Yeah. Because the way I looked at it was like, okay, I'll pay the six k in rent. Yes. I'll take my $2 million in available, whatever you want to call it, ability to get mortgage on $2 million yeah, yeah, yeah. and buy a much larger multifamily deal. Yes. That's going to cash flow and grow more than this ever will. Yeah, yeah. But it also depends what you want to do. Yeah. If you're just looking at it as to make money, yeah. if you're looking at it as, I want to make money, yeah. that's a horrible way to make money. <laughs> like, you're not oh, going to make yeah, money. Sure. But if you want to live that lifestyle and you want that house and that's your dream, yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you, gotta, like, you live once. Yeah. At the end of the day, like, like you know, people always say, like, I, I posted a video about driving an expensive car. Right, right, right. Right? Yeah. Like, people drive expensive cars to impress yeah. people. Yeah. You know what I mean? 100%. Like, I drove an expensive car when I was 18. I bought an RX-8. I yeah. bought it out in cash. <laughs> the good old rotary engine. I, in, in a year, yeah. I, I worked I worked my my, yeah. my ass off. Crazy. Okay? Trying to pay this thing off. Yeah. I paid it off in a year and a half. Something like that. Yeah. Wow. My my parents helped me out. Like, yeah, my mom yeah. co-signed. Yeah, I got yeah. a thing with, with Scotiabank. Yeah, I was able yeah. to pay whenever I had. So whenever I made extra money yeah. promoting, I would just put money in it. Put money in it. Wow. But I had the time of my life with it. If I had to redo it again, I would do it again. Yeah, yeah. But today, I don't need to impress anybody. No, I don't no, care what no. I drive. But if I want to get a nice car because I like it, I'll get it. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I like Teslas. Right. right. Right? But I would rather right now in my life invest in properties invest. than buy a Tesla. Yeah. Maybe next year I'll buy one yeah. if I feel like yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Right? That, that's often where I come up to. I, I, yeah. I'm a big car guy, but I'm not the guy who buys the show. Yes. I truly grew up a car kid. Exactly. In, in engine bays, yeah. in car, like that was my life. Yes. So I buy them for me. Yeah, but it's at, different, yeah. But yeah, like at the same time, there's like I, there's a point. Yes. Like I bought, I bought a new AMG, but I didn't buy the C63 AMG because yeah. I'm looking at it, I'm like, I bought the C43, right? Yes. And I'm looking at the C63 and I'm like, that thing's another 50, yeah. 60 grand. Yeah. It looks the same, yeah. feels the same, yeah. bigger engine. Yes. Am I really going to use it yeah. for that yeah. extra 60 grand? Yeah. So there's, a, I still have a logic point where I go, I'd rather take that then and buy something else, like an investment property, invest in it, yes. not the car. So yeah. even a guy who loves car, you have to look at And I think a lot of people make a mistake. Yes. Because I have friends I went to high school with, that, I remember one guy specifically telling me, he was going to buy a Nissan GTR, which if people who don't know is, is like $140,000. Yeah, 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 yeah. His logic was, he worked out the payment was going to be 3K a month, and his job paid him 3400 so he figured the GTR would make financial sense because yeah. his job paid him that much. Like, yes. see, that's that's the disaster. It that's is, where we're going down a slippery slope. Yeah. But you and, know what? Yeah. If the guy, if yeah, but if the guy <laughs> loves 
the car. Yeah, and he's yeah. not doing it to impress people. Yeah. It's still a lot. What's? It's still a lot of money. I get it. It's all paycheck. I would do crazy shit yeah. like that when yeah, I was. That's true. But I would then true. that would make motivate me to work more. That I agree with. Right? That I agree with. It would. Yeah. I I think if I bought an expensive car, I'd probably work harder to, to try to pay it off. It's just yeah. the way I was since I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I agree. I actually yeah. do agree. And some people don't agree with that, but I, I, I actually do. Some people don't. I, I agree yeah. with that, right? And, and the image thing helps. I'm not going to lie. Like, even in marketing industry, sometimes in real estate, people subconsciously, whether they want to or not, associate, you drive a car, you must be successful. If you must be successful, you must be able to help me. You must yeah. have some sort of knowledge that yeah. has made yeah. you successful that you yeah. can help me with, right? Yes, yes. Especially in marketing, right? And especially in real estate, because now you, you know trust a ton of money. I don't... Sorry, like for me, I don't care. But I drive. Like, I, my dad's but, the same way. I don't care. Yeah, yeah. I don't care. I, I've 100%. met, I've met like very successful people that yeah. drive cars yeah. that have duct, duct tape. Hundred percent. You know the bumper. So have I. Yeah, like. So have I. I mean, like my, my dad's the biggest proponent of that. He's always. Yeah. His, he's very old school too, and he's just very like he thinks the rich guys in the rest of car because I want to spend money. Yeah. But I'm just I'm 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 indifferent. But at the same time, yeah. I do value as a marketing person. I yeah. value image. What sells easier, the club that looks fucking fantastic or the club that looks run down and beat, right? There is something to image. It does, it's not everything, something crazy, but the clubs, the, the clubs that were run better. down. Oh, don't do that. Money. Don't do that to me. Come on. No, that, that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. But I don't know. I, might, I, I had to say that because no, that's it's good. the truth. That's good. It right. is. It is. No, yeah. that's good. That's good. Yeah. I still love, I still think the image helps. Personally. It does. It does. But it to a certain point. Yeah. Like yeah. there, there's some point where like you're at a point yeah. where you have the trust, the credentials. It doesn't matter. You show up on a bicycle, they still know what you do and who you are. It's not mm -hmm. gonna matter. But sometimes too, I, I get it. Some young professionals feel like they're already yeah. undercut. You're young. What do you know about business? Yes, yes. Especially imagine me. I gotta go to companies and, and prove to them that they should spend five, six figures with us because I'm gonna make their business make more money. And then I pull up in my Honda. They're like, well, I really don't trust you because you're 24. I don't trust you because you look young. I don't know the social media thing. I don't get it. Yeah. Sometimes I need that little edge that goes, yeah. something must Look, be working. Look, everybody has yeah. a different way of yeah. doing yeah. things. 100%. Right? 100%. And that's just how it is. Yeah. I don't wear suits. I don't either, usually. This I is as dressed as I ever get. Yeah, I don't and I'm like, still in jeans. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes I like wearing suits. It depends yeah, I know. on what you like, right? yeah. When you go yeah. to a nice event. I know. It's, yeah. Everyone has a way. But here's yeah. what I learned, actually. Here's, here's a note like that I'd, I'd end off on. But there's no one truth. Mm -hmm. There's no one way to anything. Yeah. Like you'll find success doing completely different things than I'll do. Yeah. And we'll both find success. Yeah. And I think that's something a lot of people gotta realize. Like yeah. they're chasing one person, like I do everything he does, or he does it this way, I gotta do it that way. It's not necessarily true. Yeah. Or they'll see like one mentor type guy, Grant Cardone, talking about this, and they'll see Gary Vee talking about this, and they go, that's different. Which one do I do? Which one's right? Which one's yeah, wrong? Yeah. They're both right. Yeah. Gary's gonna make a ton of money, Grant's gonna make a ton of money. Mm -hmm. There's no one way, right? Yeah. So you have your way, I have my way, my dad has his way, my business yeah. partners have their way. We're all totally different, and they're all making money. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like I knew a guy who owned about 62 doors, so yes. it's the Petumali family, and he was driving a rusted out Corolla. Like, yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not an indication. No. Right? In no. his case, he liked it better. Like another friend of mine that I'm a trivia lunch tomorrow, uh, he's a developer, a land developer, young guy, like 31, did his massive projects, but he actually gets on site and gets dirty, gets his hands on yeah. the stuff with the guys. Yeah. But he doesn't drive his M5, right? He drives his wife's like work car, yeah. rusted out and in his construction. Yeah. Because the guys look at him like, oh yeah, this guy's gonna come watch us now as we work. They don't respect them. Yeah, so he's do the opposite. Because yeah. yeah. on the site, they don't respect him yeah, in the BMW. Yeah. Yeah. So he plays both roles. He'll, yeah. he'll play it down, and then when he goes to meet for getting money from guys, yes, yes. he shows up in the BMW. Like, yeah. yeah, you can trust me with your money. I got it. Like, yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> so it's interesting how people See, my, my attitude's always been like, I really don't care. A lot of people don't. If you don't want to use me, then use somebody else. 100%. Because you know what? I know what value I can give you. 100%. Yeah. Right? You're, you're at that stage. Yeah. Like I, Proven results. That's yeah. it. Like, I'll, 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 I'll perform. Yeah. If I want to perform, I'll perform. But if you don't like give me the vibe and the energy to do it, I just won't do it. Yeah, hundred percent. That's it. Yeah. yeah. At the at the same time, you don't want to be proving stuff all the time. It's a yeah. shitty feeling, right? No, but sometimes you have to. You I have know. to prove. I know. You have to. It's just part of the game. Yeah. You have yeah. to prove, right? Yeah. So and, and that that's that's tough because you know it's it's just like you know you can make money doing something else, but you're proving somebody you have to do something. Yeah, man. To to like keep that account. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. You do. So, yeah. it's, it's the world we live in, unfortunately. Yeah. And uh, it doesn't have to be that way, but it is. But yeah. like I said, I don't think it's a must. It's just. Yeah. And I like that attitude because you, you, you should pick and choose. Yeah. People who are desperate, like, I'll do anything to get your business. Yeah. The clients that make you go through that are always yeah. the worst clients. Yeah. 
every time. Yeah, exactly. The ones, they're always going to be the biggest pain in the ass. The ones who ask for discounts, the yes. ones who ask for more, oh, I need to see this, I need to see those are always the biggest pain in the ass. So you're better you, off to just You know what? What I've learned though, away. sometimes, like, this is not through real estate, but if somebody sometimes asks for a discount, sometimes they're asking for a discount because they want to be a long, a loyal client and they want to be with you for a long time and they're trying to figure out, okay, I'm gonna be doing this for a long time. I have to spend this much money, but I'll I'll commit to this and I'll do this forever. Thing. Well, yeah. Basically, what I think is that you know you can't judge people. Yeah. Um, I'll give you an example. Once I sold a, a property to someone, yeah. and they came to buy a condo. Yeah. This guy, his hair was like like it's, it's like he came <laughs> he was like living in like you know yeah. Yeah. the 1800s, <laughs> right? So shows up, comes to the place. Like yeah. I took him serious. Yeah. Right. And I didn't judge him, and I sold him a unit. And this guy turned out like he's like a big player. Yeah. So you can't judge people because it's like us. We just said some days we want to wear a suit, some yeah, days we don't. We want to be casual. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, you don't. Oh, know. Yeah. You don't know, right? Some days you'll catch me around here in like some sweatpants and some. Well, you don't even notice, right? Yeah. So you can't judge. I know it's funny. My brother, who runs a lot of the construction for the real estate side, was telling me they were at a guy's house who's one of the investors, and he said it's the weirdest thing. I don't want to out this guy, but yeah. They didn't realize who it was, and it was a really odd habit. This guy would leave the unit every day, and he was actually the investor. He would leave the site, walk to get coffee, walk back, and then the second time he'd go to get coffee, he'd walk backwards every day. And <laughs> we didn't know why. Like, who is this? He would literally like backwards down the stairs and walk the same route yeah. in reverse, yeah. like looking over his shoulder. And I'm like, this guy's like, oh. And we figured out like a couple months in, the guy was the one who was running like all the units. Like, you don't know. And I don't know. I don't know how in that capacity, but. Like you don't, you really don't know. And he, and he looked same. That's why yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah. Same thing. He had the yeah, hair, like yeah, the, the, the hair. Yeah. He, he said he looked. What did he say? He looked like the guy from uh, Back to the Future. The, the guy in the lab with yeah. like, the white hair. Yeah. That's what he said he looked yeah, like. Yeah. And yeah. you just never know. Yeah. But at the same time, you see some massive ballers. Like when they roll up and they're freaking Rolls Royce and they're they're ballers. They're ballers. But, yeah. So yeah. there's no right and no wrong. Well, no, there is. You can't judge people. And uh, I I I'll be honest. I made a lot of mistakes judging people many yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. I was young, right? But I learned from that, right? Yeah. But Good it's stuff, crazy. Man. Yeah. Good stuff. What's your one big takeaway? Like, what's your biggest tip in sales and marketing, real estate, whatever you want? One thing you want to, like, whatever. Your yeah. five years in this business, whether it's with people, with networking. Don't just say networking, but give me like, yeah. if you're going to say networking, what's the best way to go about it? But give me one specific tip that someone can use in business, any industry that you've learned in your experience. Just give value to people. Give value. How? The people, Basically, in order in order for somebody to to use you, use your service, yeah. whatever it is, you have to give value in anything, anything. And, and I found I found that with everything that I did, all my businesses and everything that I ran, yeah. it was always given value first. Yeah. Right. And, and you know, that. customer service and taking care of people, being polite, like going that extra mile for people, yeah. and that's just. That, that, that's something that I learned from my parents, to be honest. Yeah. I have to give them credit because my mom and my dad, they're like old school Italian people yeah, yeah. that, you know, brought me up that way. And I used to go with my mom, which would buy clothes and all this stuff and just watch, like seeing her bargain and stuff. Because back then when I used to go to malls, yeah. she like the stores, it wasn't like brand name places. It was right. like, like a, a one guy that had one location in this yeah, mall, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. she would like bargain, oh, oh, yeah, and yeah. I learned from that, and yeah. and then I learned how nice she used to be with people, and and that's that's basically it. it. I just I, you know, I, I guess I just come from that, right? So, it's the most underrated yeah. business skill: be a nice person. <laughs> Being nice, I, I would say that's that's yeah. key, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I love it, man. I love yeah. it.